Somewhere with mountains and beaches, a man woke up and wondered where he was. He quickly got up as he recalled riding a plane. Knowing that it crashed, he assumed he was on an unknown island. His body hurt like he had been run over by a truck. He did encounter a disaster, but it was a blessing to be washed up on a deserted island. He hoped there were other survivors. Just then, he noticed someone unconscious from afar. He quickly ran toward the woman and hoped that she was not dead yet. Seeing how attractive her figure was, the man thought his brothers back in the army would cry in envy. Liu Yu snapped himself out of his dirty thoughts and tried to wake up the woman. He discovered that she was Guan Ling Yu. He sounded disappointed for a second. Why? Because back in high school, Liu Yu was close friends with Ling Yu and her sister Su Fei. However, since Liu Yu started hooking up with Su Fei, Ling Yu became a different person and did things to mess up their relationship. In the end, Liu Yu was kicked out of the school after Ling Yu used her family connections, and Liu Yu broke up with Su Fei. Liu Yu heard that Ling Yu became a managing director for their family company, while Su Fei became a flight attendant. On the other hand, Liu Yu became an army veteran. As Liu Yu checked on Ling Yu, he noticed the scar that he accidentally inflicted when they argued back then. Despite holding a grudge against her, Liu Yu saved Ling Yu. The redhead coughed up the water she swallowed and glared at Ling Yu, who was joking that his nemesis couldn't recognize his handsome face. Ling Yu claimed that Liu Yu wouldn't ever be handsome, even if more years passed by. Liu Yu sighed, knowing that there are a lot of blind women out there. Liu Yu then wondered if Su Fei was on the flight too, and Ling Yu confirmed it while asking for Liu Yu's help. The two frantically shouted for Su Fei's name. Ling Yu stepped on a shell, causing her leg to bleed. Liu Yu tried to help her, but Ling Yu refused and asked him to focus on looking for her sister instead. As they continued their search, Liu Yu noticed a dead man and looted some intact clothes. Ling Yu called him disgusting, but Liu Yu explained that they needed clothes against mosquitoes and the cold temperature. The two reached a nearby wood and discovered some people. Liu Yu then noticed a bag hanging on a branch. He retrieved it and checked what was inside. Just then, a man claiming to be He Fei, a manager of the Longli group and a friend of the plane's captain, ordered Liu Yu to hand over the loot. Liu Yu tried to claim the bag since it had a lighter and a watch for survival. He Fei insisted on sorting things out first, and Liu Yu couldn't help but feel suspicious. Just then, the expressions of Liu Yu and Ling Yu lightened as Su Fei came over to greet them. He Fei got mad at Su Fei and ordered her around. Seeing Su Fei shake, Liu Yu found out that his instincts were right. He Fei kept insisting on surrendering the bag, or they wouldn't let the two join their group. Just then, the captain, Yang Baekshen, took hold of Su Fei. This infuriated the ex and her sister. He Fei claimed that they needed to make someone behave, and men walked forward to beat up Liu Yu. However, Liu Yu quickly moved and knocked out Yang Baekun. More men charged toward Liu Yu, but the army veteran easily knocked out everyone else. He Fei brought out a knife, but Yang Baekun stopped him and told Liu Yu to go away. Liu Yu agreed, but he wanted to bring his ex with him. He Fei violently reacted, but Liu Yu threatened him. Baekun agreed, and Liu Yu realized that talking with fists was effective. Liu Yu told the sisters to follow him, Suddenly, another person asked Liu Yu to take them too. Liu Yu got worried about how he could accommodate them, but he still welcomed them since they looked fine. The three introduced themselves as Chen Son, Suzuru, and Millie. He Fei wondered if it was fine to let them go. Yang Baekshan reminded He Fei that they had all the food they needed for survival. Liu Yu's route continued walking away, and he recalled seeing them monopolize supplies with Yang Baekshan. Just then, Chen Song found a cave to stay in. Liu Yu then asked them to collect useful things and food. Ling Yu wondered what Liu Yu would do while they were out collecting. Liu Yu tried to make up a reason while Su Fei tried to calm down her pissed off sister. Everyone then moved on to their tasks. Night came, and they had a campfire in the cave. With hollow vines as a source of drinkable water, Liu Yu was commended by others for his survival knowledge. He explained that he served in the army for five years, partaking in extreme survival training courses. Ling Yu mentioned how Liu Yu skipped school for the army. Liu Yu then asked Ling Yu to return the hollow vine. Nili then suggested taking an early rest. As Ling Yu divided the sleeping areas, Ling Yu exclaimed that Liu Yu couldn't sleep next to Su Fei. Liu Yu then announced that Ling Yu would guard him through the night. Liu Yu then reminded them that snakes might appear. As Ling Yu asked Liu Yu not to lie, something fell on her. A cute lizard stood atop the mountains. Ling Yu freaked out and tripped on a rock. Liu Yu quickly moved and caught her while she was falling. 
Feeling hurt, Liu Yu got flustered seeing healthy melons in front of him. Ling Yu got mad at Liu Yu, who was blushing. Su Fei told them to stop arguing. During their sleeping time, Liu Yu noticed how Ling Yu was cursing him out in her dream. However, Liu Yu is now looking at Ling Yu in a different light. Just then, they all wake up to the sound of their trap being triggered. Everyone got on their feet and waited for what was to come. Some familiar faces fell into the pitfall. Yang Baichen complained about the risks of injury and infection, but Liu Yu claimed that he prepared the traps for wild animals. He Fei bets that he will eat his knife if there are wild animals on the island. A wild animal suddenly howled, and Liu Yu asked him to start eating. Yang Baichen tried to calm them down while asking to borrow a light. Chen Song defended the fact that they worked hard for the fire. Liu Yu then offered to provide a torch in exchange for clothes and food. Yang Baichun's group then leaves to get some. Liu Yu can see that Yang Baichun realized how dire their situation was. Soon after, Yang Baichun came back with food and clothes, but Liu Yu exclaimed that they were not enough. The captain agrees and asks one of his members to give him an axe. Liu Yu cheerfully saw them off. Inside the cave, Ling Yu wondered what they discussed. Liu Yu teased her by claiming that Ling Yu was being exchanged for two packs of instant noodles. Liu Yu made sure that Su Fei was feeling well, and they all went back to sleep. The morning comes and Liu Yu and Millie come out first. Millie promised to do her best foraging. It turned out she was a rock climber. Originally, Liu Yu wanted to bring Su Fei, but Ling Yu started going crazy again. The two soon discovered a place where rainwater was collected. Their only path was through the tree branches, and Liu Yu skillfully jumped on the branches. Millie suddenly freaked out because a forest snake appeared behind Liu Yu. The snake tried to attack Liu Yu, but the survival army expert quickly grabbed the snake. Realizing that he forgot to bring his axe, he used man's sharpest body part, the teeth. Fortunately, the snake soon died after one bite from Liu Yu. Millie called him amazing and excitedly jumped over to his side. Liu Yu caught her, and Millie kissed him on the cheek. Millie smiled and left the flustered Liu Yu. The two soon returned to their cave and discovered the others gathered inedible and poisonous things. Liu Yu sweetly assured Su Fi that a beginner can make mistakes at first. Lin Yu suddenly got mad that they won't have enough to eat for dinner. Liu Yu claimed that they still have time and asked them to follow him. They soon arrived at the beach where they could harvest food during low tide. Millie invited the sisters to play around in the water. Liu Yu should enjoy this sight if they were not in a crisis. Liu Yu went topless and started looking for something in the shallow water. He got a huge sea clam which meant a lot of them were just lying around. Liu Yu soon gathered a great harvest but got interrupted by someone's scream. He checked on the girls who were shouting that there was a snake in the water. Liu Yu grabbed his axe in a hurry because sea snakes are highly poisonous. However, Liu Yu got dumbfounded to see an eel. He told the girls to step back as he caught their dinner. He easily chopped it into two and the girls celebrated. Millie asked Liu Yu to guess what she found. She then showed a metal plate that can be used for a barbecue. However, Liu Yu got a different plan and started denting it with a stone to make a pot. Just then, Liu Yu noticed how the birds were flying low, a sign that it would rain soon. The group then went back to their cave. Everyone had a hot pot and Liu Yu was satisfied with it. Lin Yu called him a pig, but Liu Yu wondered why she was still holding food. The argument ended with Su Fi telling them to stop. Liu Yu was glad to have enough food and the leftovers are being dried for later consumption. Liu Yu then noticed something wrong with the wind. He quickly informed the others not to eat yet and helped him with something first. He ordered them to pile up trunks in the cave entrance to avoid the water flowing inside. Meanwhile, Liu Yu started digging holes to collect rainwater since they are freshwater, and Millie later helped him. The rain and wind became more vicious. The group was able to block the cave entrance. Chen Song tried to get out to get his stuff, but Liu Yu stopped him. Liu Yu suddenly got anxious that the cave would be their grave soon. He noticed that Su Fei was already shivering in fear and ordered the rest to huddle to keep their body temperature up. The storm continued as the group anxiously stayed close to each other. A crying Suzuru wondered if they would die of cold. She doesn't want to die without even having a boyfriend in her life. Ling Yu sadly watched Su Fei tremble beside Liu Yu. Liu Yu told her not to worry because they could survive this predicament. Chen Song and Nili also helped by lifting their moods. Suzuru thanked them. Liu Yu knew that they could live as long as there was hope. He planned to look for a better place for them to stay. Meanwhile, Yang Guchen's group was just outside, holding onto trees. Some of them were starting to fall unconscious due to the cold temperature. Hours later, the rain suddenly let up, and Liu Yu started stripping off his wet clothes. 
The Gon sister started freaking out, and Ling Yu berated Liu Yu. Liu Yu explained that wearing soaked clothes can cause colds that can make them die. It was not an issue for the bold Millie, and she also undressed. Chen Song also followed them. Millie told the other girls not to think about it too much. Even though it was a necessity, this exciting scene was too much for a man like Liu Yu. Chen Song suddenly turned into a blood fountain. Soon after, they managed to light a fire to warm up the cave. Just then, Liu Yu remembered something and ordered the others to dig some soil to fill in the water damage and use the dug area as a warm place to rest. However, Ling Yu was mad that he made them strip first. Su Fei stopped them from arguing further. Everyone then proceeded to dig some soil. The storm finally stopped in the morning, and they then moved out to look for branches. Liu Yu asked Millie to boil some water to warm up their bodies. Just then, Yang Baekun's group came running to Liu Yu's cave. Liu Yu suddenly got on full alert, and Yang Baekun shared that four of them died. He came to join Liu Yu's group since they got burned. Liu Yu tried to decline, but Yang Baekun proposed an idea. He claimed that some people in his group are prominent and will help him afterward when they return to society. The rich men then started offering market shares, a company, and even a villa, while the women were offering their bodies along with money. He recalled being treated as a prick before, but on this island he was being treated as a noble. Lin Yu started shouting and scolding them for threatening people with money. Two jealous sisters suddenly clung to Liu Yu. Lin Yu suddenly acted sundir and claimed that she was only looking out for herself. Liu Yu can only smile. He then announced that he wouldn't accept anyone and would just offer fire. He suggests they look for the rest. Yang Baekun asked for food while cursing the Guan sisters in his mind. Liu Yu didn't have a choice but to offer some dried fish. Everyone started running inside the cave and soon came out with food in their arms. He Fei laughed at Liu Yu and called him knave. Su Fei exclaimed that Yang Baekun's group took everything. Chen Song complained about how generous Liu Yu was. Liu Yu admitted his own mistakes, but he doesn't plan to play nice in the future. The girls got worried about their food supply. After some thinking, Liu picked up his axe to look for food. Millie asked if she could come to learn more, and Liu Yu permitted her to do so. The two wandered aimlessly through some bushes. Right after Millie suggested going somewhere else, a bear suddenly appeared. Millie wondered what a black bear was doing on a tropical island. Liu Yu knew that the bear's skin was thick, so he planned to go for its head. Liu Yu ordered Millie to run away, but Millie tripped on the vines. The bear ran toward her, but Liu Yu threw a rock to distract it. The bear then chased Liu Yu, who was calculating the distance between them, until he stopped. Millie wondered why Liu Yu stopped. Liu Yu then dodged the bear's attack, and he axed the bear's neck area. However, the cut was too shallow. The bear went berserk, and Liu Yu tried to create distance again. But the bear managed to hit him, and Liu Yu was thrown aside. The axe got stuck in the vines. The bear used this chance to attack, but Liu Yu managed to pull out the axe in time and use it to stop the bear's bite. Still, the bear overpowered Liu Yu and threw him upward. For Liu Yu, this was a chance since the bear's legs got tangled in the vines. Liu Yu then swung his axe and slashed the bear's neck. Millie ran over to check on Liu Yu. Liu Yu asked her to call the others since they had a feast for dinner. Chen Song and Millie helped bring the bear back to the cave. The Guan sisters and Suzuru gathered branches for their campfire. The bear meat had been cooked, and everyone cheered. Everyone started thanking Liu Yu except for Ling Yu, who kept scolding him for fighting a bear. Suddenly, He Fei appeared out of nowhere. He can see that they had a lot of meat, so they wanted to help them eat the meat. Liu Yu called them thick-faced. He can't believe that these bastards were just observing his group. Everyone then started asking Liu Yu for food. But this time, Liu Yu stood up for his group with his axe in his hand. The others are not scared since they can have Liu Yu jailed afterward. Chen Song and the others also picked up sticks to fight alongside Liu Yu. He Fei can see that his backups are freaking out. He then suggested sending someone forward for negotiations and pointed to Chen Song. Liu Yu told him to be careful. He Fei started making a deal with Chen Song. Chen Song soon returned and told Liu Yu that they just ended up demanding where to get the meat. Chen Song mentioned how He Fei wanted some of their meat, but he threatened He Fei using Liu Yu's name. However, things were too suspicious for Liu Yu. During the night, Liu Yu had a hard time sleeping because of the sudden change in shifts with Chen Song. He then noticed that Chen Song was missing. The meat, pot, and axe went missing, and it only meant one thing. Chen Song had betrayed them. Liu Yu woke up the girls and told them about the situation. 
Liu Yu and the girls then sneaked somewhere and discovered Chen Song enjoying his time with the two women from before. Liu Yu can't believe he Fei manipulated Chen Song like this. Su Fei wondered what to do. Liu Yu can see that Bei Chun and Yi Fei are gone to hunt. Suddenly, a man started screaming that a fierce boar was attacking. Liu Yu told the girls to get away to avoid the crossfire. Meanwhile, Yi Fei confronted the boar with a familiar axe. However, the boar is like Pikachu, tackling all of them with sheer speed and accuracy. Liu Yu laughed at them since they deserved karma. Bei Chun suddenly noticed Liu Yu and asked for his help. He mentioned how Liu Yu should save his fellow survivors. Liu Yu and the girls told the bastard pilot to fix their own problems. He Fei and Bei Ken continued convincing Liu Yu. Liu Yu then asked for his axe back. He Fei got it back, and Bei Ken ordered him to help them now. However, Liu Yu's group turned their backs on them, and Liu Yu suggested using fire torches since most wild animals fear fire. Bei Ken realized that they still had fire in their camp and immediately moved to get some. Liu Yu and his harem then left the area. While traveling through the woods, Liu Yu mentioned looking for a new place to live. Ling Yu wondered why, since there are a lot of food sources around them. Liu Yu flicked her forehead and explained that first, they have evil neighbors, second, their cave mostly turned into mud after the storm and might collapse any time soon. And finally, Liu Yu noticed that Bei Chun was planning to push the blame on Liu Yu's group about the boar attack. Su Fei worries that they might miss the rescue if they go further from the crash site. Liu Yu also thought the same which is why he was planning to find a place near the coast. The group soon searched the rocky coastal area. Liu Yu noticed something, and he went to check it out. Millie told him to be careful. Liu Yu felt pressured since he was the only man in the group. As Liu Yu landed somewhere, he noticed some rock piles. Six of them looked intentionally placed. Liu Yu wondered who had lived on the deserted island before and if they were still alive. Liu Yu then decided to dig to learn more. Knowing that they were tombs, Liu Yu prayed and asked for forgiveness first. As Liu Yu started digging, the girls found him, and they wondered if Liu Yu was already building a camp with rocks. Liu Yu explained that he found traces of other survivors way before them. Just then, a wooden puppet was uncovered. Liu Yu picked it up and discovered its sculptured face. Liu Yu suddenly felt like the puppet was gazing back at him. Liu Yu freaked out while holding the ominous puppet, and Millie exclaimed that it was one of those used in an ancient race's ritual. Ling Yu wondered if there was a primitive tribe on the island. Still, Liu Yu asked them to look for more clues since it meant that someone had already occupied the island before. Just then, Liu Yu noticed a dark spot in the center of his palm. He tried to rub it off, but it wouldn't come off. Ling Yu called him over, and they left the area. The wooden puppet then creepily smiled. It didn't take long for them to find a cozy place for the group to stay. However, Millie noticed that it had been occupied before. Suzuru noticed something and ran toward it. Millie wondered if a primitive tribe really lived on the island as Suzuru lifted a strange rock. The Guan sisters got scared and clung to Liu Yu. Liu Yu used this chance to scare his vulnerable childhood friends. Liu Yu got smacked by the sisters in the end. Later, while Liu Yu and Millie fetched some fresh water, Liu Yu noticed that the mark was fading. Liu Yu really felt like he had encountered something supernatural. Millie got his attention and decided not to overthink it for now. He hoped the other girls would find food. Meanwhile, Su Fei was happy that she found some potatoes and got excited that Liu Yu would praise her. Suzuru and Ling Yu also found something sweet. Ling Yu shared some with Su Fei, who decided to give them to Liu Yu later instead. Ling Yu stopped eating and decided to share some with Liu Yu too. Suzuru laughed at the Guan sister's drama. That night, the group roasted some potatoes and stocked their supply. Seeing that it was a lot, Liu Yu asked if they dug out everything. Ling Yu wondered if Liu Yu was planning to do farming. Liu Yu reminded them that rescue was an uncertain thing, and they might be stuck on the island for years. Su Fei hit Liu Yu and told him to stop joking around. The girls then got full and started making space to sleep. Liu Yu noticed that he wouldn't have space, so Millie offered some space for him. Ling Yu claimed that Liu Yu couldn't sleep with Millie. Everyone looked at her as she tried to make up a reason. Seeing that Ling Yu was concerned, Liu Yu decided to stay at the cave's entrance. Ling Yu couldn't hold it anymore and started getting mad at Liu Yu. She pointed out that Liu Yu wanted to make a harem out of them. Everyone blushed and became self-aware of Ling Yu's statement. Liu Yu called Ling Yu crazy and walked off. Ling Yu then wondered what Liu Yu was afraid of and started stripping for him. Liu Yu quickly noticed that something was wrong and pinned Ling Yu. However, Suzuru also became aggressive and started presenting herself to Liu Yu. Being pinned by two hotties, Liu Yu asked Millie and Su Fei for help. 
The two then held Ling Yu and Su Zhiru. Liu Yu wondered what those two ate to become that perverse. Su Fei suddenly recalled something and tossed a bag of wild fruits to Liu Yu. Millie recognized it as the red rosemary fruit. Millie left the two perverts in Su Fei's care and started explaining how the red rosemary fruit had hallucinogenic effects, basically like drugs. Liu Yu wondered if water was enough to calm them down. But Millie explained that letting the people who ate it vent was the only solution. The ex-couple suddenly blustered at the same time. Liu Yu's demon was telling him not to hesitate anymore. He looked at the two perverts who were calling him out and could only curse out his frustration. Liu Yu knew Millie had another solution. Millie suggested taking a cold bath. Liu Yu then decided to drag Ling Yu and Suzuru to the beach. Soon after, the coldness of the water was already taking effect. Seeing that this had happened, Liu Yu decided to look for food himself. Suddenly, Ling Yu touched Liu Yu's face and started apologizing. Seeing that Ling Yu was back to her senses, Liu Yu ordered the rest to return to their cave before they caught a cold. It has been half a month, and Liu Yu is getting anxious that the rescue won't come. Su Fei noticed his grim expression and offered her crab to cheer up Liu Yu. Liu Yu just thought that things were getting difficult for them. He felt bad seeing such beauties stuck on a deserted island. With a resolute voice, Liu Yu suggested doing things the other way around and building a wooden boat to look for help. Millie kind of agrees that drifting on the sea is effective, but Lin Yu exclaimed that it would be hard for them to set out to the sea without food and drinkable water. Liu Yu claimed that he had already taken those things into consideration. The next concern is who to work with. Liu Yu mentioned getting help from Yang Baichun, but the girls immediately got mad at him. Liu Yu told them to trust him for now. The girls wondered what Liu Yu's plan was. Soon after, Liu Yu discovered that Yang Baichun's group had used their previous base. Yang Baichun greeted them and wondered if Liu Yu wanted more women for his harem. Liu Yu can see that the pilot's mouth can still spout trash. He asked Yang Baichun for cooperation. He mentioned that the chances of rescue are getting slimmer, so it would be better to build their own raft and look for help themselves. Yang Baichun suddenly got interested. Liu Yu knew that no one could resist the temptation of being able to go home, and Yang Baichun's help was needed in this matter. Yang Baichun and He Fei agreed to Liu Yu's plan. Liu Yu then gave out orders to gather useful materials and food for the journey. However, Yang Baichun and Yi Fei confessed that they had only eaten bark and coconuts for the past few days. Liu Yu asked about the boar, but it seems like they were not successful in hunting it. Liu Yu then offered his help to hunt the boar, but he wanted them to listen to his orders. To hunt the boar, they decided to dig a trap and lure the boar into it. Since most males were dead, Liu Yu took on the role of bait, which made the Guan sisters worried. Liu Yu discovered that the territory of the boar was the place where Millie would always fetch water. He Fi then pointed to the other side of the river and discovered the boar playing in a mud puddle. The trio sneaked toward the boar, but Yang Baikun accidentally stepped on a small branch. The boar became aware of their presence, and the men ran with all their might. Liu Yu can't help but blame Yang Baikun for opening the door to their deaths. Liu Yu ordered them to hold on since they were now near the trap. The boar jumped on them, and they all dodged it. The boar dove into the trap head-on and met sharp wooden stakes at the bottom. The big meat is in the hole, but it is still alive despite bleeding a lot. Liu Yu then asked to borrow He Fei's knife. He then tied the knife to the end of a stick, turning it into a makeshift spear. Liu Yu clearly remembers the weak points of a wild boar, but this chunk of meat is still lively. Liu Yu calculated the timing, and everyone watching held their breaths. The boar suddenly lay down, and Liu Yu used this chance to stab it. The spear lodged in the boar, however it struggled with all its might, lifting Liu Yu into the middle of the pit. Liu Yu accidentally let go of his spear and fell toward a stake, which injured him. He fell to the side, and the Guan sisters tried to help him get back up. Liu Yu wondered if he would die this time after surviving the plane crash. Liu Yu accepted his beating by the boar. A loud thud resounds from the pit, and Liu Yu opens his eyes to discover the boar dead. It accidentally bumped the spear against the wall, making the spear lodge further into its brain. Everyone celebrated since they have food now. The girls then helped Liu Yu get back up with sweet words. Liu Yu won't give up now that he's got the best warmth. He can get beside him. However, Yang Baichun and Yi Fei wore suspicious expressions on their faces. Soon after, Yang Baichun shared the plan of making a wooden boat with the others, but many of them raised their doubts about the plan. An old man mentioned the risks of storms and running out of food while drifting. Liu Yu then wondered if they planned to live on the island until resources ran out. 
he mentioned that the sea has better chances of survival compared to a deserted island. He exclaimed that he doesn't want to die as a wild man and doesn't even know the current year. The others then started shouting in agreement with Liu's words. Finally, it was time to start building the wooden boat. It was not a hard matter, and everyone worked on their own respective tasks with no complaints. They also managed to gather enough food supplies aside from the boar meat. During their dinner, some middle-aged men talked about missing their families, even if their wives' children were not theirs. Liu Yu can't help but wonder what's happening with the world. Seeing everyone laugh, Liu Yu was glad that everyone was now getting along without quarrels and drives of greed. Five days later, everyone managed to create wooden rafts and push them into the water. They were divided into two rafts that were connected with thick vine ropes. Everyone paddled further until they got further from the island, bidding farewell. A huge wave suddenly hit them, and Liu Yu instinctively protected the Guan sisters. Liu Yu checked on them and discovered them looking erotically wet. However, it was a bad start for them since the cold would later get to them. Liu Yu then started stripping his wet clothes, and Nili started asking for his attention since he had only protected the Guan sisters a while ago. Seeing them get along, Yang Baikun felt jealous because Liu Yu got all the beautiful ones. Soon after, they stopped paddling and let the currents drift them home. The old man felt relieved since he would be able to go back home and eat his favorite food. Just then, he noticed an island far ahead. However, the mountains are a bit familiar to Liu Yu. He exclaimed that it was the same deserted island that they left. Yang Baixin claimed that Liu Yu must be mistaken. Liu Yu insisted that he had the deserted island memorized after visiting it many times. Liu Yu can't believe that God is forcing him to live on the island. Later that day, they still came back to the island despite paddling away ten times. This situation totally ruined Liu Yu's plan to make up with Su Fei. He wondered if they had met a ghostly island. Suddenly, it started raining, and everyone didn't have a choice but to return to the island. Everyone started to panic, and a huge wave flipped their rafts. The raft broke into pieces, and Liu Yu told the others to hold on to something while he gathered them around. Everyone then grabbed onto the same plank. Liu Yu noticed everyone had their hopes down. The others started cursing out God and hysterically laughing as they started to accept their fate on the island. Out of 21 people, Liu Yu noticed that there were 12 left. Yang Baikun wondered what to do next, but Liu Yu lashed out at him, exclaiming that he was only human. He then went to check on Su Fi and the others before going back to their base. Liu Yu then helped Su Fi drink something warm, but Su Fei knocked aside the bowl. She pointed out how useless it was since they were dying in the end. Liu Yu can see that the others have also lost all hope. Liu Yu didn't have a choice but to start scolding them. He asked them not to stop hoping for nothing, and they can only continue living on the island for now while finding a way to go back home. Liu Yu was frustrated by the fact that he wouldn't be able to face Su Fei's parents for not protecting them. Su Fei apologized, but Liu Yu kept calling himself useless for not protecting Su Fei. Su Fei then hugged Liu Yu while exclaiming that they would live for him. Days later, Liu Yu still felt bad for shouting at Su Fei. Still, he was thankful that Su Fei was the first one to recover and helped calm down the others. Yang Beichen suddenly appeared with the other survivors, and he looked like he was up to no good again. He just wanted to thank Liu Yu for finding food for them. Liu Yu can't believe they are robbing his group in broad daylight. Yang Beichen also found Liu Yu's survival skills useful and tried to recruit him. Liu Yu exclaimed that he doesn't want to be a selfish person's subordinate. Seeing Liu Yu as uncooperative, Yang Baikun signaled his group, and they all surrounded them. Liu Yu then discovered Millie and Suzuru being held hostages, and this infuriated Liu Yu. Yang Baikun didn't like the fact that Liu Yu had a good woman beside him. He was confident he could do anything he wanted since there was no law on the deserted island. Millie started struggling, but Yang Baikun kept threatening Liu Yu. Liu Yu called them the worst beings. Wanting to settle their scuffle, he Fei attacked Liu Yu. However, Liu Yu quickly dodged, and Yi Fei noticed how Liu Yu got faster than before. Liu Yu kicked him in the worst possible body part to be hit. More men attacked Liu Yu, and the axe-wielding protagonist managed to block the sticks on time. Yang Baikun told Liu Yu to stay out there as he dragged Suzuru and Millie to enjoy their bodies. Liu Yu got angry, and that led him to fend off the others using his trusty axe. He hoped Yang Baichun wouldn't blame him for what he was going to do next. Liu Yu swung his axe hard. A man got slashed and dropped dead on the sandy ground. He Fei can't believe Liu Yu dared to attack them with violence. Liu Yu then walked slowly toward Yang Baichun while making a countdown. Yang Baichun tried to ask Liu Yu to stop doing this to some women. 
Liu Yu ended his countdown and raised his axe. Yang Baikun freaked out and fell to the ground. The Guan sisters are worried about seeing the violent side of Liu Yu. Liu Yu then destroyed Yang Baikun's chances of getting children. Yang Baikun swore to leave while bending in pain. Knowing Yang Baikun's character, Liu Yu knew that the bastard pilot would be back sooner or later. Liu Yu told the girls that they needed to move places again, but the girls wondered where to go. He then recalled seeing a place near the wild boar's nest that also needed a freshwater source. The girls agreed, and they all moved out. Liu Yu's group soon found a cave covered with shrubs. Liu Yu stopped the girls from getting in first, and growling sounds were coming out of the cave. Liu Yu went full alert and told the girls to stay at the back. Liu Yu realized that there were more wild animals nearby that might be comparable to the bear. Just then, a wolf jumped out of the cave, and Liu Yu skillfully sliced it into two like butter. He exclaimed that they would have a feast for dinner. However, a human skull came rolling out, and Liu Yu realized that eating the wolf would be the same as eating human flesh. Liu Yu told the girls that he would do some cleaning first, and the girls discovered the skull. Lin Yu suggested moving somewhere else, but Liu Yu was resolute to use the place. In the end, the cave was cleaned, and the girls thanked Liu Yu for it. Liu Yu was glad that his hard work for half a day had paid off. He then decided to find some food next, but the girls told him to watch their house. While Liu Yu was confused, the girls started making up reasons to find food themselves. Liu Yu felt glad to have a dependable harem. During bedtime, Su Fei rolled toward Liu Yu. She claimed that she couldn't sleep. Liu Yu then assured Su Fei that he was with her. Suddenly, the other girls also stuck to him like magnets, and he told them not to act like they were sleeping. Just when Su Fei tried to make her move, a loud scream suddenly echoed outside. Everyone who was having a sweet time got startled. Su Zhu hoped that the place was not haunted, but Liu Yu doesn't believe in the supernatural. However, the voice sounded like Yi Fei's. Liu Yu decided to go out to check things out and discovered the other survivors being apprehended by some tribal people. He also noticed a woman covered in a dark veil. The tribal men continued shouting in an incomprehensible language and beating up Yang Beikun. Liu Yu can't help but laugh at the bastard pilot's karma. The woman then approached something and started praying in front of a familiar wooden puppet. Liu Yu's palm suddenly started glowing and tingling. A huge strange beast suddenly appeared behind the woman. She moved her hand to the side, and the beast ran in the direction that the woman pointed. Liu Yu was surprised and suddenly felt that they were looking for him. The woman continued praying, and an orb suddenly appeared. With the power of the orb, the woman started levitating. Liu Yu was shocked to see something akin to magic and God's axe. He found his supernatural axe ridiculous. He should warn the others so they can move somewhere safer. Liu Yu soon told them, but Lin Yu told him not to scare them like they were children. However, Liu Yu insisted that the beast was out to hunt them. Liu Yu suddenly felt like people were nearby, and the group heard something from outside. Liu Yu told the girls to stay put, and he managed to block the entrance with rocks on his own. Lin Yu gave him his axe, and Liu Yu got ready to intercept the beast. However, the rocks were easily knocked down by the beast. Liu Yu noticed how hard it would be for his axe to damage the beast with its thick fur. He then realized there was another way and ordered the girls to bring some burning firewood. Millie brought over a torch, and Liu Yu pushed him aside when the beast suddenly attacked. Liu Yu then swung around the torch, and the beast ran away. Su Fei now agreed to move somewhere, but Liu Yu claimed that it would be a death sentence if they went out now. Su Fei realized that the beast could still track them. Millie then reminded Liu Yu about dog training in the army. Liu Yu thanked her for making him remember it. The morning comes, and Liu Yu's group starts moving out. Lin Yu wondered why Liu Yu was playing with mud. He explained that by covering themselves in mud, the beast's senses won't easily track them. Lin Yu tried to decline since she didn't want to get dirty. Liu Yu warned her that she would be the beast's dinner if she didn't do it. Liu Yu was anxious the whole time since they were against something unnatural. As they traversed the water, Su Fei noticed a foggy valley, which is great as a hiding spot for the strange woman. Liu Yu agreed, and the group went through cliffs and rivers. They were soon surprised upon reaching their destination. They can't believe that such a place exists on a deserted island. Liu Yu was speechless the whole time. Millie discovered how clean the water was, and Liu Yu was glad to see a source. Ling Yu then noticed that the water was hot, and Millie started stripping to enjoy the hot spring. The Guan sisters followed Millie, and Liu Yu scolded them for not being wary of possible dangers in the water. 
Millie tried to say something about the water while intentionally flaunting her body in Liu Yu's direction. This scene was something Liu Yu could die for. With a nosebleed, he decided to look for food, and the timid Suzuru offered to help. They then found some wild fruits, but Li Yu was worried since Ling Yu and Suzuru acted weird. Suzuru claimed that the fruit in front of them was safe since it was spread evenly in the area due to birds eating it. Li Yu quickly climbed the tree and was amazed by the fruit's taste. After his harvest, he noticed a huge snake on the ground. He then grabbed Suzuru and ran away. He then found a thorn tree and decided to use it as a trap. He removed the thorny vines and greeted the huge snake. The snake attacked, but Liu Yu dodged and threw the thorny vines at the snake. Just when Liu Yu thought it was over, Su Fei warned him that the snake got back up to attack. Liu Yu couldn't believe the snake knew how to play dead and block its bite with his axe. The Guan sisters panicked while wondering how they could help, and Ling Yu found something. Ling Yu suddenly called Liu Yu and pointed somewhere. Ling Yu found a man-made building, and the group ran inside. Milly noticed the snake going away. Liu Yu assumed that the snake was a pet and a guard for the owner of the place. Su Fei wondered if someone really lived in the place they had entered. Later that night, the snake followed the strange woman. The woman then entered the building and Liu Yu, who was sleeping, woke up due to her presence. Liu Yu apologized for trespassing and claimed that they were being chased by the snake. The woman spoke something, but Liu Yu couldn't understand her. The girls woke up and Su Fei clung to Liu Yu. The woman then raised her stick to attack them. Liu Yu tried to attack first, but the woman dodged. The woman then hit his forehead with the stick, and Liu Yu can't move suddenly. The Guan sisters ran to his aid, but Liu Yu's palms suddenly glowed, and he regained his movements. Nervously, Milly started talking to the strange woman, and the others couldn't understand them at all. Liu Yu wondered what language that was, and Milly explained that it was an old language that she learned a bit. Liu Yu asked Milly to tell the woman that they meant no offense. Millie did some explaining but the woman suddenly grabbed Liu Yu and chanted something in front of him. Millie tried to ask something, but the woman told her to be quiet. A mark then appeared on Liu Yu's palm, making the woman startled and quickly did a dojeza. Millie asked what was wrong and she started translating. The ancient brand of their god Sipperer appeared on Liu Yu's palm, making him the chosen son of God. As a man from the 21st century, Liu Yu heavily doubted the woman's claim. The God King Sapporo is the head of the top 10 God Kings and the most powerful. Liu Yu is now the disciple of Sapporo, and he is to receive the inheritances. Liu Yu still can't believe it, but he suddenly recalled how the woman displayed something supernatural. Liu Yu can only sigh. The woman also claimed that no one survived this far after receiving the brand. Liu Yu then wondered why the beast was out to hunt them. The woman explained that the beast only went to fetch them for her, Meanwhile, the other plane survivors became slaves of their king. It would just mean that there was a civilization on the island all along. Liu Yu then wondered what the woman's name and face was. She introduced herself as Mei and asked Liu Yu if he was sure to see her face. Mei then removed her veil and everyone could see how much of a beauty she was. Mei then asked Liu Yu to be responsible for her since he saw her face. Of course, Liu Yu got flustered by the new addition to his harem. Just then, Mei looked to the window and said something. Millie claimed that Mei needed to bring them back to the tribe. Mei then used her supernatural powers to lift everyone. As the group flew, Liu Yu complained about how his worldview got shattered in an instant. All of a sudden, Mei used communication to translate everything for them. Millie felt she had just lost her job. Liu Yu suddenly felt like passing through a barrier, and they all arrived at a settlement. Upon seeing huts and spears, Liu Yu realized that the barrier also isolated their civilization's development. The tribesmen then started bowing to their saintess. One of the men was glad that she brought some tasty-looking slaves. Of course, Liu Yu got mad. Mei explained that Liu Yu is an emissary, and the old man suddenly knew his position. However, Mei was unsure what to do with the four women with Liu Yu. She explained that she was only responsible for Liu Yu's safety and no one else. Liu Yu then exclaimed that he wouldn't let his women be the playthings of others. Mei then glared at him and mentioned a solution to solve them all. Liu Yu needs to marry the girls at once. She warned him that they would be obtained by other men if they didn't have a fixed partner. Knowing that Mei had already made him responsible for her, Liu Yu realized that polygamy was the norm on the island. Liu Yu let out a sigh and hugged the girls with him, claiming to marry them all. Mei then ordered the tribesmen to do something. The men prepared a hut and carried them toward it. Liu Yu and the girls were thrown in. Mei told Liu Yu to complete the ceremony and shut the door. Liu Yu wondered if Mei was just playing around. 
Liu Yu noticed the four girls looking concerned. Liu Yu told them not to take May's words seriously since they are modern people. However, Millie stood up and claimed that she wouldn't hold back anymore. Millie wanted to be with Liu Yu instead of being a tribesman's trophy. She aggressively kissed Liu Yu and pinned him down. Su Fei suddenly exclaimed that she was the proper girlfriend and should be the one to marry him first. Su Zhu also shyly confessed that she also liked Liu Yu. But a sudden puff of smoke made Liu Yu realize that something was wrong. The hut suddenly caught fire. They got out of the burning hut, and some figures were watching from somewhere. The elder can't believe Liu Yu burned the hut, but Liu Yu exclaimed that it was intentionally done by someone else. Just then, the other tribesmen dragged in Yang Baekhun, who was snooping around. Frustrated that his sweet time was interrupted, Liu Yu smacked Yang Baekhun with vigor. Yang Baekhun exclaimed that he didn't want to see them live peacefully when others were taken in as slaves. Liu Yu snapped and planned to murder him. The elder interrupted since they couldn't have their emissary dirty his hands and ordered the others to whip Yang Baekhun to death. While the bastard pleaded for his life, an arrow suddenly struck one of the tribesmen. They were under attack, and Liu Yu wondered if there were enemy tribes around. More arrows flew toward Liu Yu's group. An enemy tribe suddenly appeared, and Liu Yu can see that taking them on is a bad decision. The elder got the attention of Liu Yu's group who were escaping. He explained that the chicken tribe took this chance to attack since Mei was gone. He then gave Liu Yu something while asking him to run away. After a whiff of the smell, Liu Yu couldn't believe that they got gunpowder. Su Fei suggested the others run away, but Liu Yu told them to spread out instead to avoid the enemy chasers. He told the girls to hide separately, and told them that he trusted them enough. The girls then promised to do their best. With Liu Yu's signal, everyone went their separate ways. After quite the distance, Liu Yu heard Millie's scream and discovered her being captured by the enemy tribe. He then confronted the enemies. One of them offered Millie in exchange for the gunpowder. Liu Yu doesn't want to let go of it. But knowing that these tribesmen still don't have the technology to process it, he discarded it. While the tribesmen were distracted, Liu Yu grabbed Millie and they jumped into the nearby river. They were lucky to live through that. Just then, Mei appeared out from hiding. She explained that despite being a saint, she is not omnipotent. She was wounded the last time the Haida tribe was attacked. Because he already got the seal, Liu Yu wondered if he could also get stronger. Mei claimed that Liu Yu's training path should be different from hers. She further explained that the legacy should just come to Liu Yu. He suddenly remembered the rendezvous point. Mei offered to give them a lift. The three soon arrived at the designated place, but the others were not yet there. Liu Yu wondered if the other girls were captured or fallen into traps. Millie tried to assure Liu Yu that they must be safe. However, Liu Yu was anxious and asked Mei for the enemy tribe's location. Mei agreed to give a map and thought that this would be training for Liu Yu. Liu Yu then ordered Millie not to follow him. Millie complied and kissed him while wishing Liu Yu luck. Mei intervened with the map and told them that it was time to go. The next morning, Liu Yu finally reached the enemy tribe's encampment. He felt frustrated seeing them celebrating their successful invasion. Liu Yu then introduced the appearance of his indigenous self to save his women. He then snuck around the camp and discovered a room full of human skeletons. While looking around, he discovered a strange pillar that suddenly drew his attention over. Liu Yu snapped out of it and felt strange something like an unnatural force. Just then, a voice suddenly asked what Liu Yu was doing there. Liu Yu suddenly became alerted, and the voice noticed that Liu Yu was an outsider. Liu Yu tried to leave, but some huge cockroaches appeared before him. The voice then asked him to put his hand on the pillar, but Liu Yu doubted the voice since he could see a lot of people who died in the area. The voice then threatened Liu Yu. Liu Yu didn't have a choice and placed his hand on the pillar. His hand got completely stuck, and Liu Yu noticed how something got sucked out from him. He felt that it was his life force. Just before he got swallowed by despair, he recalled Ling Yu and Su Fei. Liu Yu suddenly felt wanting to live with his harem and fought back against the pillar. The brand from his palms suddenly appeared, and he could feel his life force coming back to him. Someone suddenly tapped Liu Yu's shoulder, and an old man offered his help to open the seal if Liu Yu do something for him. He told Liu Yu not to be alarmed and to continue absorbing. Liu Yu continued the absorption until the brand's color changed. The old man noticed that Liu Yu successfully opened the seal of the God King. The old man commended how fast Liu Yu opened the seal, and Liu Yu wondered what the old man wanted. The old man wanted Liu Yu to use his power to move the pillar. Liu Yu gathered energy from his palms and pushed the huge pillar down. The old man thanked Liu Yu for helping him escape and announced to everyone outside that there was an enemy. 
The enemy tribe poured inside the room, but Liu Yu now has the power to fight them. Ten minutes later, Liu Yu stood at the top of the enemy corpses. Someone was still alive to tell Liu Yu that another tribe captured a lot of women. Aside from the chicken tribe, another tribe called the Nuxing tribe was also attacking others. Soon after, two beautiful tribeswomen named Amy and Aisha roamed around the forest, feeling bored with the routine their tribe was having. Aisha wished for something to happen like the sky falling or something. Just then, a man appeared from the treetops. Liu Yu asked how they were doing. The sisters immediately got interested in Liu Yu's body, wanting to eat him. Liu Yu apologized and explained that he doesn't have enough flesh. The sisters laughed and told him that they could use Liu Yu aside from eating. Liu Yu then asked them about the Nuxing tribe since they captured his women. Amy then offered to take Liu Yu there since they are enemies. Liu Yu suddenly realized that they were from Nuxing. Aisha quickly knocked out Liu Yu, and the sisters celebrated as they had just picked up a tasty-looking man. However, Liu Yu was awake the whole time and just waiting for them to bring him back to their base. They arrived at the camp, and all Liu Yu could hear were tribeswomen talking about taking Liu Yu's seeds. Suddenly, Aisha greeted their leader. A beautiful woman named Zhang Maiyang appeared. Liu Yu noticed that Maiyang had stopped talking. After scanning Liu Yu, Zhang realized that he was wearing the same kind of clothes as the ones that they had captured. Liu Yu then stopped faking his sleep and asked where she kept them. Mai Yang exclaimed that they were all slaves deprived of human rights since they were outsiders. Using the power of the God King, Liu Yu broke free from the restraints. He explained that the strong have more to say about human rights and asked Zhang not to be scared since it was noticeable that Liu Yu was different from other men. Liu Yu offered to do something for Zhang in exchange for his companions. Liu Yu knew that he could take on the whole tribe alone but they might hurt his companions in the process. While Liu Yu offered to teach them how to use gunpowder, Zhang noticed God's seal on Liu Yu's palm. Zhang suddenly asked Liu Yu to stay with them forever instead of seducing him. However, Liu Yu wanted to proceed with their deal first, and it was a turn-off for Zhang, who left to bring over the captives. Liu Yu couldn't believe the thing he hated before was now his weapon. Just then, Amy and Isha knelt and asked for forgiveness. Liu Yu told them not to worry since he let himself get captured on purpose. The two started clinging to and flirting with Liu Yu right after they found out that Liu Yu was the chosen son of the God King. Amy suddenly remembered that they had a celebration and claimed that Liu Yu was their VIP. Their tribe celebrates great harvests, and what Liu Yu can see right now is any man's dream. Amy can't help but laugh. Just then, a woman appeared and ridiculed the sisters for bringing in a man weaker than hers. Amy can see that Zhang hasn't spread the news yet. The woman then brought out her muscular slave and ordered her to beat up Liu Yu. However, Liu Yu easily caught the slave's fist and counterattacked, sending the big guy flying. The woman claimed that the sisters and Liu Yu were cheating. The bald slave then asked for a second round to see who would attract more women. But Liu Yu's menacing appearance with those toned muscles attracted more women. Zhang finally arrived and brought over Su Fei, Ling Yu, and Suzuru, who wore expectant expressions. They are all glad to see each other, with Ling Yu acting like a huge sun deer again. Zhang then told them to rest and enjoy the hot springs nearby. Liu Yu and the girls took a dip in the hot springs, and he asked them how they got captured. Suzuru explained how they were caught. Ling Yu got mad at Liu Yu for neglecting them after he promised to protect them. Liu Yu claimed he quickly ran over to rescue them. Seeing that Ling Yu liked the tribe, Liu Yu suggested staying. Seeing Liu Yu flustered, Ling Yu wondered if he wanted a reward. The girls then decided to give Liu Yu a massage as a reward. Still, Liu Yu needs to show his powers to gain privilege in a tribe run by women. On the third day, Liu Yu will demonstrate the use of black powder with a small bomb. However, Zhang doubts something small, but Amy assured her that it would be useful. Amy was Liu Yu's designated assistant for processing the gunpowder. However, she caused Liu Yu to be stared down by the other girls. Finally, Liu Yu demonstrated his results, and a little bomb caused a huge explosion. Zhang was impressed, and Liu Yu explained how dynamite works. Zhang knelt and praised the son of the God King, and everyone did the same. Liu Yu can see what Zhang was trying to do. Liu Yu used this chance to ask Zhang if he could stay in the tribe with his women, seeing that they treat the girls well. Zhang was glad because it was a disadvantage to only have women. She would not reject such a request from the son of the God King. The discussion suddenly turned to developing the tribe further with agriculture. Liu Yu got excited about discussing and making rough sketches of farming tools. However, they lacked iron that is only handled by another tribe, the Ironclad tribe. 
However, Zhang worries because their asking price is quite high. Liu Yu wondered what it was, and Zhang confessed that they wanted men. Liu Yu assumed that they liked men, but Zhang explained that they needed muscles for collecting ore. Everyone in the ironclad tribe is a tribe, so they need strong men to do chores for them. Liu Yu suggested getting the minerals themselves. The only problem is that Liu Yu was not taught in the army to do iron work. Liu Yu also learned that a trip to the mines takes a day. The girls soon came out, and Ling Yu suggested that they stay and work on their husband's farming reform. Liu Yu called Ling Yu lazy for not traveling, but Ling Yu pointed out that she got a higher education for this thing. Liu Yu then decided to do some packing for the trip to the mines. He felt glad to be working with Zhang. Stay tuned for part 2. Thanks for watching.